with over 400 celebrity interviews and tons of pop culture nerdiness, Too Opinionated is a safe haven for your inner geek. Find us at MeisterCon.com or on YouTube under MeisterCon Pod. And please subscribe. It would really help us out. Thanks, everybody. Hi, everybody. Welcome to another edition of Too Opinionated. Super excited today. I've got actor Neb Chubin with me. So welcome, Neb. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for having me on the show, uh, Michael. Yeah, I'm really excited to, uh, to to have you as a guest. You know, I think you've got some pretty exciting things coming up, and I want to talk about some of that. But before we do, I think you've got a really interesting story about kind of getting into acting because you came to it a little bit later. You know, tell us a little yeah. bit about that. What got you into the entertainment business? <laughs> It is an interesting story. I was uh, a student of uh, mechanical engineering in Boston in the crew team rowing, and I was working as an engineer for a long time. And I was getting really, really uh, tired and I didn't have, I felt like my soul is, was dying. And when I started the acting classes at uh, casting studio in Boston, CP casting, I felt this amazing offload of my shoulders after the class. And I said, this is for me. <laughs> <laughs> and this is how I started going to classes and really enjoyed it. I mean, the classes were like three hours long, twice a week. And then I went for the whole year. And then and this is how I started. How, this is how I really wanted to do it, you know, because if you want to do acting, you really have to love it. Not love it, but you have to admire it because you're waiting days or you're waiting the whole day for one minute of your chance to be in the movie. That's right. So, that's, yeah, yeah, acting is not a profession that's easy to do if you're doing it full time. If you're only kind of halfway in it, it's really difficult. Yeah, yeah. It's, um, that's how I started, um, and then, and then I started, and then I moved to Miami, and I thought I could do something in Miami, but I was wrong. I wasted my time. Not until in L.A. L.A. is the really place to go. Yeah. And my career took off, and it was amazing, and, and I love it now, yeah. Have you got to play an engineer on screen yet? <laughs> Not yet. That's, <laughs> that's actually a really good one. Uh, but I played a lot of doctors. Like this one in my cage, I'm, I'm a psychologist to, to a prisoner, to an amazing prisoner who is, you know, very smart. So I'm his doctor. And I played doctor a few times because when I was a kid, I always wanted to be a doctor and yeah. I didn't go. I, I guess my parents were engineers, so I didn't become doctor. So, <laughs> but I can play doctor really well. <laughs> well, I was going to say, that's, that's not, that's not a bad consolation. You get a little well, bit well, of it. <laughs> when you're, when you're an actor, you can just be anybody you want. That's, that's right. Really that's right. Yeah. So Mind Cage is the, the new movie. And it's got a yeah. pretty, pretty interesting cast. So it's got uh, John Malkovich and uh, Martin Lawrence, which I never would have put those two together, but there they are. They're together, but opposite sides. Yeah. 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 And um, yeah. So Martin Lawrence is in a serious detective role, not, not a comedy. So this is why he wanted to take that role. Yeah. And uh, John Malkovich is the first one who decided to uh, take this movie because he loved the character of the artist who is basically locked up in a jail and doing all kinds of stuff while he's there. Um, and the detectives, they're very uh, puzzled. They don't know what's going on. So the whole movie, you really <laughs> don't know what's going on until the end. <laughs> yep, but that's... That's what we love in the movies. We want to be kind of caught off yeah. guard. Surprised. And then you have then you have Melissa Roxborough who is um, carrying the whole movie. She's the star in Manifest, and uh, yep. she really did an amazing job. I most most of my scenes were with her, so I really respect her uh, as as an actress and as a person. Yeah, she's a she's a terrific uh, actress. I mean that's a that's a really good cast 
has that I know it's early yet that's still coming out but has that landing that role has that led you to other work um this role is not out yet I mean this this um this is coming out this Saturday this film is coming I know. out this Saturday I know film. that's exciting uh yeah. we um we've got the ability here at the studio we can we can put about 20 people in so is this a streaming movie or can we see or do we need to go to the theater and see well Lionsgate re is releasing it and uh, they say it's going to be a little bit less than 100 theaters but they they haven't told us we well, are pretty close with the production yeah so they haven't told us how many but we'll know soon it's coming out yeah i'm hoping that it's um, it's streaming as well so we can we'll get a group together and kind of watch it it'll uh, be streaming in the studio as well it will be streaming as well yeah yeah so that'll be exciting we'll get a group in here and and kind of uh kind of watch uh, together it's always more fun to watch a movie with a group i think actually i would love to watch the film with like 20 people <laughs> <laughs> i always watch with one or two or alone yeah that's a it's good more one. fun I, in a big group idea. yeah that's a great idea did you um did you get to do a uh, premiere with this there was no premiere um uh, martin lawrence did something on his own yeah um and then everybody i think there there was there's no actual premiere like it was on on fanatic with john travolta where i was executive producer and actor we had a beautiful premiere and a red carpet it was really great um but this time no what uh what was it like working with john uh, with John Malkovich or John Travolta? Well, he, well, both. But how about John? They're Travolta? both amazing. <laughs> <laughs> John Travolta. John Travolta is such a such a great guy. I mean, down to earth. Yeah. It was amazing working with John and with John Malkovich. Uh, you know, he's also Croatian. So we were talking about. Uh, actually, I knew more where he's from than what he knew. But then he came to Croatia for the first time uh, just a few months ago. And then it was great working with him. I only had one scene with him. Uh, and, you know, he was giving me little tips. He's a great, great actor. And I I really, I'm happy I met him, you know. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's pretty great. Did, uh, did John Travolta, did he teach you any dance moves? <laughs> yeah. He didn't teach me dance movies, but... Um, <laughs> We had a scene in the middle of the night on uh, Walk of Fame on Hollywood Boulevard, and uh, that was that was that was cute. You know, it was good. Yeah, yeah, that's pretty. Uh, that's pretty great. Do you get back to Croatia uh, every so often? Uh, you know, I'm in Croatia now for holidays. Oh, very good. Yeah, yeah. It's about ten fifteen p.m. So we'll get back after the holidays. We'll be back probably in in January, back yeah. to L.A. Yeah. Yeah. Very, uh, very nice. Yeah. I didn't realize you're in Croatia. Shame on me. I'd have done this earlier. So you wouldn't be up. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's good. It's perfect timing. Let, let, let you know that. Perfect timing. <laughs> What's it like, like when you're in Croatia and Croatia is playing in the world cup is, is it different there? You know, are people, are they are they like everywhere else and just kind of crazy about their soccer? Or is yeah, it they're pumped up, man. Yeah, you know, I was really worried because on the radio today, every radio, oh, we're gonna kill them. We're better than Argentina because we have a good score with Argentina. We always we always win, and I was like, no, guys, this is wrong. I mean, you guys, whenever you overconfident, you get this surprise. Like That's right with Brazil, we were so. Like, I think Croatia thought had 40% to win, 30, 40%, and we won. With Argentina, everybody was, oh, yeah, we're going to get it. We're going in the finals. But I knew our limitations, you know. And uh, I was very skeptical. But to tell you the truth, when we beat Brazil, the you couldn't pass through the streets. The streets were crowded with cars, with, with flags. You know, people are, it was a small country, so people cannot believe that we came up so high. You know, so many great countries were disqualified. I mean, Germany in early. I mean, 
Portugal, Spain, Brazil, <laughs> nobody's playing yeah, anymore. Yeah, Brazil, a lot of people thought we're going to win it. I thought, but, you know, they made a couple of mistakes. We were hanging on and, you know, they got too relaxed and this is what happens. You really have to be, you, you, you cannot be cocky. I mean, you have to be always uh, respectful, you know. That's right. Yeah, that's exactly right. Yeah, as soon as you get cocky, and that's that's true in about. And I knew sport. that. I knew that Croatia is gonna get relaxed, and this is what happened. You know, three zero, boom. Now they're gonna get <laughs> like. <laughs> now they're gonna be like, <laughs> okay. Oh, it only takes God. like just one time, to to kind of relax, and then it's over. Yeah, they yeah. say that two zero is the most dangerous. Uh, for the ones leading 2-0 because they thought it's over but then they get one goal and then it's and then it's you know any, anything can happen but 3-0 yeah, forget about that that's, that's <laughs> so you got to do this isn't the first time you've worked on a movie with Martin Lawrence right you did some work on Bad Boys 2 yeah in Bad, Boy, Bad Boys 2, I was uh, a stand-in, a double, and an extra. Um, in that movie, I spent a couple of days working there. And um, it's a huge movie. It's, it's, it's a big action movie. Yeah. It was good, you know. I, uh, I got to do a lot of things. I got to um, drive the motorboat instead oh, nice. of... Uh, yeah. Instead of Michael Cannon and uh, Sh Michael Shannon was actually the one when you see the motorboat driving far, far away, that you know you only see a dot and little hair down. That's me, not him. <laughs> <laughs> well, if you're gonna double somebody, that's a pretty good one. Yeah, this was that was before I was seriously into acting. It's it's Seriously, is when I came back to, to L.A. And L.A. is the place. You know, first time I came to L.A., I was an engineer. And uh, I worked something with telephone network. And it looked to me a boring city. It was like yeah. suburbs, suburbs, suburbs. Like, ah, L.A. It's... But when I became an actor, I came to L.A. with such excitement. I looked at it a different way. Everywhere people reading scripts, getting ready for the role, getting this, getting that. Anywhere you go, it's connected to acting. I loved it. You know, I love it. It's like my favorite city now. Yeah, you, I love LA too. Uh, my wife spends a lot of time there with her work. So I sneak out there a little, a little bit with her. And it's a great city because it's, it's like four cities in one. It's so big. It's very wide. Yeah, I mean, you're either on east side or west or I don't know. It's yeah, like some of the scenes from Long Beach, <laughs> like Long Beach, and I I live in like uh, West Hollywood, so Long Beach to it's like whole another city. It's far yeah. away because it's two hours in the traffic. Oh yeah, I know, I know the tra the traffic is when I go out to L.A. I do not want to drive. I'm going to Uber everywhere because I don't want to fool with that traffic. Well, that's what it is. You know, if you're an actor, this is the place to be. Yeah. That's what I mean. Yeah. When uh, we were there um, this past Halloween and we stayed there at uh, in West Hollywood, it's really nice. Mm. Really nice. Yeah. 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 It's pretty good. I like it there because there's so much within walking distance, which is good for me. It gives me stuff to do while she's working. Yeah. Yeah. And it's nice well, weather. It's fine. It's always sunny. You know, I don't know how they pick this place on Earth, Hollywood, and started making movies. Is like the perfect weather on the, in the world, like on Earth, always yeah. sunny, and it's I know it's beautiful. Even in the middle of the winter, it's never too hot. In the middle of the, I mean, not too cold. In the middle of the of the summer, not too hot. I always say to to my friends, they pick this place, perfect place for acting. <laughs> for the stars <laughs> yeah it's yeah i mean everybody like everybody you run into you, you've got to be nice to them because you never know you're probably going to end up working with them at some point 
it's good to be nice to people anyways. Yeah, that's exactly right. You did a, I think it was a show called Feel the Dead. Yes. And worked, I didn't, uh, uh, which is, I've heard really good things about, but I didn't realize that Estella Warren was also on that. Yes. Yeah, was, how, was uh, how did that role come about? Uh, that was, my, my first breakthrough movie was Final Stop. Yeah. And uh, that's a short film where we are uh, actually focusing and trying to uh, bring the awareness to uh, human trafficking. Yeah. Like a lot of kids are being taken and we, we made a short movie about this 20 minutes and I played a worried father. So the director of this movie, Feel the Dead, saw my, my film and he, he thought I would be perfect for one of the cast in, uh, in Feel the Dead. And I met uh, Estelle, I, I was with her for good three weeks in the mountain, all the way like in Vol on Volcano in, in, in the middle of the, the trees, not only alone with her. I mean, there were like 30 of us in, in right. place. And working with her was was great. I mean, you know, yeah. she's... I've, she's always, really I've nice. always liked her as an actor. So I think she, she uh, at the end of the filming, she bought me a beautiful sweater as a thank you present. Because uh, they were stranded, all all of the actors were stranded there, and I was a kind of up and up and coming new actor that was like seven eight years ago, and uh, I I was the only one who had a rent a car, <laughs> so, so every Saturday <laughs> Sunday we I I took them out to get them out of the this they call it refuge which is like a, a lodge far up on the mountain far away from the civilization. So uh, yeah, it was that was our that was our shooting. The kind of a field of dead is uh, working with uh, you know dead people walking, and then you're killing them and stuff like that. Yeah, which is a, it's kind of a fun movie to do. It was a series, and then we we were there for a long time. That yeah. that's that's that that was a harsh uh, harsh filming. Yeah. Yeah, right. And it was, yeah, it was a television show, not a movie. Yeah. Um, is there is there a genre that you haven't got to do that you would like to try? Most of my movies were drama. Yeah. And uh, because my face is such that looks worried, so I don't have to do much. <laughs> uh, so I'm so I'm always uh, get those roles. Um, then. I was in a movie with Natalie Byrne just uh, six months ago here in Hollywood. Um, in uh, in I was in it's like I got a comedian role, like nice. a comedy, role. yeah. And I felt, and I didn't have any lines. It was basically just um, improvising. Okay, nice. And, was it? Uh, did, did you like that, or was that difficult? I loved it. <laughs> I just we just made made fun stuff, you know. And then my partner was a very short guy, and I'm very tall. So we're trying to break in the house, and we just basically we're uh, blaming each other. How come we cannot get in the house and get this bride out? Because we're filming the groomsman, which is coming out soon, and uh, <laughs> the uh, the bride she escaped the wedding, so the. The uh, <laughs> the groom sent all his groomsmen to find her. So like ten of us are going to look for her, and then all all the things started happening after that. You know, so that was that was that was one of my uh, that was one com comedian role for comedy drama. I did uh, the only thing I wasn't I didn't do is a horror like typical horror, but I don't know. I mean, I don't know. Feel the Dead sounds like it has a little bit of horror in it. Yeah. yeah, it is. Yeah, so yeah, that's we, uh, that's not too we, bad. Maybe we maybe we get you scene. some science fiction. Science fiction, yeah. I mean, I'm I'm producing my own movie called um, The Islander. Okay. And uh, yeah, it's apocalyptic fantasy. Very and, nice. Um, and that's uh, like it is uh, fiction, science fiction, because. 
it's happening 300 years from now when the, the whole world is drowned and only few isle, islands are left. And this is where our world, this is where our thing is happening, the whole movie. I like that. And um, it's about the boy who saved the world, his little world. He saved the only world that was on the earth uh, by, being, by, by being visionary. Uh, he was yeah. hit by the thunder. And if you're hit by the thunder in that movie, then you get to see pieces of the future. Yeah, I okay. like that. And then he saved like his that. world because, yeah, it's, 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 a, it's a story on its own. <laughs> I could probably talk two hours about it. <laughs> <laughs> when does uh, when does that one come out? Uh, we're, we're working on, we have 1,000 CGI shots. And our budget wow. went for one million, yeah. And one bu- our, our budget went for one million to like, or close to 10 because it's becoming um, very, very uh, action, adventurous, family adventurous action, a lot of CGI movie. Yeah. And uh, it's all shot in Croatia, coast of Croatia and city of Dubrovnik. And That's exciting. Uh, we are finishing the CGI shots in a couple of months. We're going to finish by April and hopefully we'll sell it this summer, like next summer. And we'll probably watch it a year from now, you know? Yeah, that's exciting. Yeah, if we keep going like we're going, that that might be a true story. <laughs> it's true. I mean, yeah, I mean, the... <laughs> well, it's 300 years from now. We have time. We got time. We got time. Have you ever thought about stepping behind the camera? Um, I am always behind the camera because... For example, this is my production, The Islander. Yeah. I'm a producer, main producer, and I'm always behind the camera there. Actually, my role is not a big. Uh, my role is very s- small, just a cameo role. But um, yeah, I'm behind the camera on that one. Yeah, those, especially those those type of films, a producer, I'm sure you've got plenty to keep you busy. Oh, yeah. I, I cannot, I mean, I have to be really being focused on on the production side and the business side of the film yeah because uh, it's not it's it's actually a story about um uh, that was a story about uh was supposed to be a story about me but the the script evolved so much that the true story of my immigration to the united states actually became apocalyptic fantasy after so many different scripts yeah i cannot i cannot explain that's a strange that journey somebody to somebody like only people that are in, it just happens like the script evolves so much that goes away so far away from what you originally wanted yeah. only thing that left were the names my name my father name my grandmother grandfather name that's the only thing that is left from my true story so that's the movie that we're gonna do. We're doing for the last five years. So I've been working on it for five years. It's it's epic. Yeah, that's that's awesome. Yeah, good for you. That's that's exciting. Yeah, you'll have to you, you'll have to come back when that one comes out so we can talk about it. Well, yeah, that's that's gonna be an interesting one. Yeah, well, I think yeah. people will know about it. So that's that's that movie. And then um, there's a there's a medieval movie. We're we're almost, we're finishing here in Italy. That yeah. is going to be distributed in U.S. by Shout Factory, called um, the Last Redemption. Oh, okay. And I play I play a uh, silent Jack uh, in that I, I don't talk much, which is uh, just I talk at the end of the movie, and uh, me and my bandits, my brothers and sister, we save the girl from being killed because she was a witness to. To a murder and then we get a lot of people after us um and then this is how the movie ends you know we we save the girl and it's, but it's 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 done in, in medieval time like oh 1500 oh, yeah so that makes sense costumes, so that's why silent jack that would make yeah it sounds so all amazing. these costumes yeah uh, are amazing yeah oh, they, was it they, fun they, dressing they, up finishing our time, huh was it fun dressing up for that yeah, it's fun riding horses. I learn how to ride a horse. Oh, not, yeah, I that's a good skill horse. to have. I fell from the horse, but 
I only bruised my rib, so I was lucky. I had a really tall horse, really, really high. But I'm a, I'm a big guy, so I needed one like that. Yeah. And, and so uh, did you – here's the question, though. Did you fall while it was standing still, or was it at least moving? No, nah, it was moving. Yeah. yeah okay. Okay, see, that's yeah. not so bad. Then you can – He was moving, and then he – I felt he's gonna I, because I don't have experience in in riding that much. So the horse sort of uh, hit something and he went down a little bit. He was going to come up, but I thought this yeah. was it. He's going down. I'm going down. I'm just jump. But the guy came up. He didn't oh, fall yes. on me. I thought he's gonna fall on me. No, he was just like a little bit. He uh, he went. He hit the stone or something, but. Uh, if I had more experience, I wouldn't fall. I would just hang on to it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I, d I, d I would have done the exact same thing. Because, yeah, if you felt like he was going to fall, I was like, I don't want to be under this. So I'd be yeah. I'd be bailing, too. Yeah, for sure. For sure. Well, uh, Neb, thank you so much for taking a little bit of time. So the, the new movie is Mind Cage, and it comes out Friday or Saturday? It comes out on the 16, which is Saturday. Yeah, yeah, it's very exciting. Oh, it's Friday, 16, 15 is Thursday. It's Friday. Yeah, that's Friday. Friday. Yeah, that's that's exciting. Um, we didn't really talk much about this movie, but it's a detective story uh, yeah. where um, they're trying to find out what's going on, who is killing all these people. And they're going, talking to me because my patient is a suspect, but he's locked in the jail. So how is he doing it? They didn't think in the beginning that he was doing it. And they thought that he knows who is the copycat, you know, who is gonna who is doing his way of killing. And then they they still didn't know until the end of the movie how is he doing it. Because so many people different people were killing. Even one of the detective even one of the detectives was murdering. So they really didn't know. How did he what happened? So at the end of the movie, it's it all comes down to last five to ten minutes, which is really interesting. Well, yeah, uh, I like that. And Martin Lawrence is playing the detective that's trying to figure it out. He's playing the detective with Melissa Roxborough, and two of nice. them are, you know, like he's an, an older detective in the movie, and she is a uh, younger, and then nobody believes that she could solve the case and uh the senior officer in the in, he's also like oh you want to you're not going to be able to do it but she did she she outsmarted everybody including the artist so at the end uh, she she uh she was able to resolve who was who was making all these murders and uh, i i don't want to say it so people can watch it and enjoy that's right it again. that's right they will be surprised so was oh, your was your character the doctor are you working with the police department to try to figure it out yeah, in the beginning they came to me and I'm like, no, I cannot talk. I don't know. I cannot give you my patient. He's he's my patient. I'm you know under my protection. But they basically said I have to. And then I mean that's all in the movie. And then yeah. uh, I co collaborated with them. And then I started talking mostly with Melissa. She was the main female detective, and uh, we were working together. And then uh, most of like. I would say uh, that the whole movie, it, the only three actors are mostly in the movie, which is three of them. And then we're side actors and I'm number fifth. But the whole movie ends on me and on my character. And uh, it resolves at the end when the camera is on me last two minutes. That's, so, that's, pretty, that's so, a good role. Yeah, it's a good role. So basically... I had to learn a whole bunch of words how John Malkovich speaks. So when I talk, it seems like he's talking through my mouth with his voice. Okay. Because, yeah, because he came inside of me. And then when she killed him, he came outside of me. And then I was, I woke up. I'm like, what's going on? And they just walked away. <laughs> so that well, see, that's, a, that's a weird thing. twist. Yeah, that's one challenging thing about this movie. It's um, how to lip sync somebody else a whole speech, you know. Yeah, 
But yeah, I think that'd be difficult, especially if they're if they're very different from the way you normally talk. It'd be difficult. Well, yeah, I gotta see this. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I gotta see it. I mean, John Malkovich is he's he's such an interesting character anyway. Just just normally. And then when he yeah. plays those type of roles, it's he does such a good job with it. Yeah, I'm really interested. Right. And then to see Martin Lawrence in a in a dramatic role when you've got such a great female lead, mm -hmm. and then you're in it too. That's that's amazing. Yeah, I'm I'm very uh, happy. I got this chance to be with them in the movie. And um somebody asked me if I wanted to pick the role, which role I would use, I would pick. And I said uh, I would I would pick uh, John Marco's role because yeah. It's very, I mean, it's a lunatic, but yeah. very smart. And he was playing with detectives all the time. He was playing, giving them, putting them on the wrong lead, all kinds of stuff. So he had them around, around his finger, but then she figured something out. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I love it. Yeah. I can't wait. That, that sounds like a, that, that'll be a good movie for a group because it'll have us guessing because I'm not mm -hmm. going to help him any. I'm gonna let them try to figure it out. <laughs> well, Neb, yeah. thank you so much. This has been terrific. You, yeah, and you have to come back when you get your movie made. You got to come back. Yeah. Okay. I mean, we'll be in touch. Uh, that's gonna be a much bigger. I mean, that's it's a huge movie. We we'll, we'll all know yeah, yeah. about it. Yeah, that's terrific. So, so last thing for for I let you go. Um, are you on social media? And if you are, where can we find you? Uh, you can find me on Instagram, on uh, Neb Chupin, and on Facebook. That's all I have. Yeah, I think that's a, that's that's plenty. You don't need to uh, be on everything. People no, just need to know where to find you to find stuff out about you. Yeah. Yeah, and yeah, Instagram's have, a good one. Instagram, I have um, I have one Russian role where I was playing a Russian tough guy with uh, in the movie of. Uh, Dolph Lundgren, uh, oh, yeah. called Acceleration. I was playing uh, uh, a Russian mafia. It's in Russian language, so I learned Russian for that role. And Russian people say that I sound like Russian, so I was I was really pleased. And also on my Instagram, there is a shootout scene with John Travolta in the movie called Poison Rose. Yeah, we're shooting each other for about thirty seconds until he got me. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty great. Yeah. 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 That's not, uh, not bad at all. What did you and Dolph, cause he is a very intelligent guy. Did you have any intellectual discussions while you were filming? I didn't have a chance. I that's only, um, I wasn't in the scene with him. I was yeah. in the scene with John London, who is also a great actor. Yeah. Yeah. And, I like John. And, uh, with Natalie, Natalie Byrne who's up and coming yep. actress, producer, very, very, very good. And I have a lot of movies with her already. So I didn't have a chance to meet, to meet uh, Dolph, no. Yeah. Yeah, that would have been interesting because, yeah, he's – you don't expect it, but he's a very intelligent guy. I didn't know that. Yeah, thanks. Yeah. Thanks for having Yeah, me. I think he's got some PhDs and stuff and whatever. Yeah, it's uh, I always found that interesting with that because you'd never guess that by watching him on screen. Mm -hmm. He usually plays the tough guy. Um, yeah, pretty good. Well, uh, Neb, thank you so much. This has been terrific. It's time for you to get to bed. Not yet. <laughs> Maybe I'll go out because my friends are... <laughs> are, are, they, something... are they singing the blues somewhere? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what's going on. <laughs> I'm going to find out soon. Yeah. Well, real pleasure to meet you, sir, and I hope we get to do this again in the future. Thank you. Thank you very much, Michael, and uh, uh, talk to you next time. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Hold on one second. All right, so that was Croatian actor Neb Chupin. Um, He's been here in the States, kind of lived in Boston. He's been here for uh, 30 years, so I'm not sure we can still still call him Croatian. I think we've adopted him with that. Uh, really good, talented 
actor. I am looking forward to Mind Cage comes out this Friday, streaming everywhere. You may even be able to catch it uh, in some theaters. John Malkovich, Martin Lawrence, and Melissa Roxburgh. Really good cast. So definitely help support that movie, help support Neb, and go out there and see that. Thank you guys so, so much for tuning in with us again this week. We definitely appreciate that. If you want to support us, a couple of ways you can do that. You can subscribe to our YouTube page, MeisterCon Pod. We really appreciate that. It's free. has all the video content from our show. If you're listening, whatever podcast application that you're using, please subscribe there. and That would help us as well. Closing in on 500 episode only episodes, only have a few left to go, and you can find all of those audio and video on our website, MeisterCon.com. It'll also let you know if we're doing anything in studio, like watching Mind Cage, or if we're going on location, if we're covering a convention, whatever we have going on will be on the website, MeisterCon.com, so make sure to check that out. Thank you guys so, so much. Till next time. Bye, everybody. <laughs>